All right, so the first thing we're going to look at here is just a really quick whirlwind overview of the software interface. Now, we're just going to be working in the default workspace. Like other Adobe applications, you have the idea of workspaces where you can move around between workspaces. You can also drag and drop windows and rearrange all these things and place windows over here, et cetera, et cetera. However, we're not going to be customizing anything. We're just going to be staying in the default workspace. You're more than welcome to play around and configure this on your own time if you want to have your own custom layout. Now, just to overview the panels here. On the left is the project panel. This is where you're going to find all of the assets that belong to your specific After Effects file. So it could be like pre-compositions, your images, imports from Adobe uh, Illustrator or Photoshop, movie files, audio files. All of those things are going to exist over here in the project. Right here in the middle is the main sort of area that's the composition window. This is where you're going to be actually seeing your movie or your film or your motion or your design. It's kind of like the artboard, you can think of it, or like the canvas area in other Adobe software. Over here on the right is where you're going to have all of the sort of properties that you're going to be accessing through the different panels. This is a really common place you'll be playing around with. And then down here on the bottom, we have what is known as the timeline. So the timeline is over here in this gray area. And then over here, we're going to be having our layers with their associated properties. And that's pretty much it. The tools you'll notice in After Effects are right up on along the top bar up here. So let's go ahead and just dive in and jump right into our first composition so we can just get through this as quickly as possible and pack in as much information. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new composition. The composition, again, is basically just like an object that has motion that you place inside of your scene. Now, all compositions have a specific size inside of After Effects. And there's a bunch of presets here you can see that you can toggle down from. So here's all the different presets. If you don't know a good preset to start with, I recommend just doing the 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. 1920 by 1080 is what's considered HD resolution, or this is the most common resolution for TV um, that's considered high definition. Now, you can also mess around with a few of the values here, but the only one we're going to change here is we're going to change this specific one for the frame rate. 24 frames per second is what's considered standard for uh, film and cinema. However, we're going to change this to 30 frames per second as we're going to be working a little bit more in the motion design side of things. And 30 frames per second is a good number, I believe, for working with motion design. Last, we'll want to just take a look and see what the duration of this composition is going to be. You can see that right now I essentially have a 30 second duration. The way this works is the first value that goes hours, minutes, seconds, and then frames. So this is telling me this is going to be a 30 second clip I'm going to be creating, which is quite long. So I'm actually going to back this off and I'm just going to create a 10 second clip. Now the background color here is uh, a little bit irrelevant because it actually doesn't matter. Whatever you choose this background color to be, it'll just be the background of your composition. But one thing to realize is that this color is actually transparent when you render your final movie out. So it's merely just for you. If you're designing black assets, then you of course want to have a different background color, but typically you'll just want to leave this at black. And then go ahead and hit OK, and you'll see we have our now composition here created in the main composition window. Now you can zoom out and zoom in on your composition just by scrolling your mouse wheel. It's a really easy way to shortcut to zoom in and out here. Um, but you can see you can always use the little zoom down here and pick any zoom level that you want. I'll just leave mine at 100% for now. So we've got our composition and you'll notice over here in the properties panel, or sorry, the project panel, we have our composition. It's just called comp1. So I'm going to name this. Of course, I could have named this composition in that other window, but I wanted to show you how you name things over here. So you can just select that, hit the return on your keyboard, and then I can call this my main comp. So this is going to be my main composition. Comp is a really common shortcut for composition. You'll see lots of After Effects users just use that acronym as comp. So now I've got my main comp, and let's go ahead and do a little bit of design here and some final animation. So the, the exercise we're going to be creating is a bouncing ball animation. We're going to create this little bouncing ball to illustrate how to use keyframes and then also illustrate the concept of spacing and timing and just get you started with the basics of layers and organization and movement. So what we need to do is we need to create our ball. So I'm going to come up here to the top left and I'm going to select this little um, the shape tool here. I'm going to come down to the ellipse tool. And you'll notice that by default, you may have different values here, but it looks like I have a red fill and a stroke. And I actually don't want the stroke. So I'm going to click the little stroke right here to bring up its properties. And I'm just going to set this to no stroke with this little slash icon. We'll do that. So I'm going to click the slash icon. 
and you can see now I have no stroke and just a fill. And I'm gonna make my ball just white to make it a little easier to see, not so glaring of a contrast with red. So I'm gonna put my little slider up here to white, hit okay. And now when I create my circle, it should have a white uh, circle and no stroke. So I'm holding down shift on my keyboard so that I can make a perfect circle. And sure enough, this pops up over here and I can see my circle and I'm just gonna sort of guesstimate a size for the ball here. Doesn't really matter at this point in time. Uh, whoops, I let go too soon, I let go. Um, of my mouse before the shift. So let's try that again. There we go. And new to After Effects 2023 is the Properties panel on the right. Now this is actually a significant change from older versions of After Effects. And I'll explain this in a minute, but you'll see that now that I have the uh, sort of my ball, if you will, selected here, I can hold down spacebar. If you zoom in and you hold down spacebar on the keyboard, you'll get the hand tool, which will allow you to click and pan around the scene if you need to zoom in on a specific area. So I'm just zoomed in here to 200%, so I'll just back this to 100%. And you'll notice that if I get my selection tool up here on the right, the keyboard shortcut is V. That's a really common keyboard shortcut through all Adobe apps. You'll be using that one a lot. So I can hit V and then select this object. Notice that as soon as I select my ellipse, in the, in the right hand side, there's this new properties panel in After Effects. And essentially what we do is we have access to all of the th values and things that we can change over here. Now traditionally in After Effects, all of these same properties are available in the actual layer. You'll notice that as soon as I created that object, a layer appeared down here in the layers panel. And one important thing to note in After Effects, you can't create a blank layer, so to speak, not like you can in uh, like Photoshop or something like that. Everything you create in your composition ends up becoming a layer. So they're sort of like objects. So here I've got this shape layer. I'm gonna hit return and just name this to my ball. Hit return. And now you can see I've got my ball. And if I toggle the little teeny tiny arrow right here, this will open up the layer properties or object properties. So when I toggle that, you'll see that there's several other levels here. I have contents and then I have transform. So if I open up contents, this shows me I have an ellipse. If I open up ellipse, I have all this ellipse path. If I open up that, I have size and position, I have stroke, and there's just all of these things that are available to you. And what I'm getting at here is that all of these properties are also now over here. They didn't used to be. So there's kind of a quick access way to get to them. Now, there's so many things that you can um, manipulate in After Effects. You'll see that all of the values that are blue over here are values that you can change and update. And we can animate those or change those properties over time through tweening or interpolation. Now, it's a really common thing when you're working in After Effects to just have a lot of layers and a lot of things going on over here, too many things going down. So there's a few keyboard shortcuts to help you with this. The one you're gonna wanna learn right off the bat is the one U, the letter U. So if you press U, you can see it hides all of those little properties. And if you press U again a couple times on this layer, it's going to um, toggle those properties in and out. Now, you can also come over here and work with these. So what we're going to do right now is just set up a simple um, ball bounce. I want this ball to bounce down towards the ground. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create one more layer here and the reason why I'm creating this layer is I wanna show you later on in this tutorial how you can move multiple objects. So let's just give ourselves a floor. So I'm gonna get a rectangle and I'm going to pull up the gray color right here. And I'm just gonna simply draw out a rectangle here on the floor. So we'll just drop, drop that somewhere over there. My little off the canvas, that's no problem at all. And there's my floor. So my ball is gonna bounce down, hit the floor, bounce up and kind of do this little simple motion. So what we need to do now is we need to think about those poses in the traditional animation sense. What are my extremes or my keyframes? And put those ball in those positions. So I'm gonna grab my uh, move tool again here up at the top left and I'll select my ball. And I'm just gonna actually start this a little bit higher so it's gonna fall from about right there. Perfect. Okay, now the playhead you'll notice, this is where all of the animation takes place. So right now, what I want to point out is the timeline. If you use this little guy right here, you can zoom in and zoom out on your timeline. And I want you to notice the numbers. So right now this is one second, two seconds, three seconds. And notice it goes all the way to 10 seconds, which is the way we set this composition up to be. But if I zoom in all the way, now I'm seeing one frame, two frame, three frame, four frame. And if I scroll over to the right, as soon as I hit 30, it's going to move over to one second. So notice how it says one second. And then if I go all the way to 30 again, it's gonna to go to two seconds, okay? You can see the time wherever your playhead is right over here. 
Notice it's telling me I'm at one second and 25 frames. Okay, so that's how you can read the little time code and see exactly where you're at. You can always use this as well to zoom in. This is like another little shortcut for the little zoom, zooming in and out on your time. It's something you'll do quite often in After Effects. So I'm gonna take the playhead and I'm just gonna scroll back. There's lots of keyboard shortcuts to work in here. We're not gonna go through them all right now. Um, but I'm gonna place my playhead all the way at the beginning of time. So I'm at frame one, and that's gonna be the starting position for my ball. So that's the extreme one, or pose one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the ball, and I'm gonna open up the transform section. And you'll notice this, that there's these five or so main properties. There's the anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. And most all objects in After Effects can be animated with at least these five properties. The specialty properties of the ellipse are underneath the contents. This is all the properties that are specific to ellipses that I can animate. But everything essentially has these five, and we're just gonna be working on the position. You'll notice that the position has a uh, X and a Y value. So this is the actual position of the object. Anything that's blue inside of After Effects, you can actually do what's called scrubby zoom or scrubby the value. So if I drag, I just click and hold and drag, I can actually manipulate that value right from within here. So that's pretty cool. Or you can just click and set a value. So I'm just gonna set this to 900, and then I'll set this guy, I'll just leave that one blank. So you can just you know type in a value and hit return, and you'll set that specific value there. So clicking and dragging also works. Of course, I can always click and manipulate this here. So if I'm up here in my canvas and I move this guy, you'll notice that those values down there, the position values are changing. So I'm gonna say Command Z to undo that and put that back to where it started. All right, now before I move this object, I want you to pay attention and notice that there's this little point right over here on the center of the screen. And this is a very important um, point inside of After Effects. In fact, this is the anchor point, okay? So right now my anchor point isn't really centered on my circle. And all of the transitions and all of the movements and everything inside of After Effects, these values essentially, these position values are based off of the anchor point. So unless you have a specific reason otherwise, it's always a good idea to have the anchor point be in the center of your object because that's where all the transformation will occur from. Just to illustrate this point, I'm gonna select the circle and I'm gonna come up here and get my rotation tool. I'm gonna to rotate this circle and you'll notice that sure enough, it's rotating about or rotating around that anchor point or transition point. So what I want to do though, is I want to have this point directly in the middle. Now, when you're working with the anchor point, you have, there's a dedicated tool to move that. It's called the, it's got a weird name, it's called the pan. Um, it's this one right here. You can see if you click, it's called the pan behind or anchor point tool. People call it both of the things. We have to select the dedicated tool and that allows me then to click this and then move it into a specific position wherever I want. Now, if I wanna snap to a specific edge or point, you hold down the command or control key on a Windows as you're moving, you'll see it's gonna snap to this point. So now if I snap it to, let's say this point, and I get my rotation tool and rotate around, oops, if I click that right, you can see it's now rotating about that point. So I want this point to be in the dead center, however, and there's a keyboard shortcut we can use for that as well. And the way we do that is by selecting our layer, let me grab my move tool, and we're gonna to go to the layer menu, and then down to transform, and there's a command here that's called center, center anchor point in layer content. You'll notice the keyboard shortcut there that you can do on either Windows or Mac. So when I select that, notice how that anchor point jumps right to the center. Now another shortcut just to show a different way is if I, I'm gonna move this guy out again. So if it's over here, I can hold down the command key and a double click on the actual tool and that jumps it right to the center as well. So those are two methods of getting that. Perfect. All right, so now my anchor point is in the middle. Now you'll notice that the position values down here corresponds to that anchor point, which is in the center of my object. So that looks great. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is actually move this guy and set up our keyframe. So we have pose one set here. So let's go ahead and uh, animate. So again, I'm gonna open up the ball layer and After Effects 2023, you can use this panel over here. I'll probably start doing that eventually, but just to show you the old way, I'm gonna locate the position and one thing I'm going to do before we get going here is notice that the position value has an X and a Y coordinate, but they're on the same line. So right click, you'll notice that there's an option here that says separate dimensions or separate. 
So if I click that, it's going to actually split the X and Y into two separate animatable properties. And that's what we want to do because we're going to be animating them individually. So what I'm going to do is I click the little teeny tiny hourglass. That's how you start a keyframe or create a keyframe inside of After Effects. So the Y position is the Y axis, the X is the horizontal, Y is the vertical. So the Y one is the one I'm going to be animating first. So I'm going to click the stopwatch, make sure my keyframe is on uh, the first keyframe. I actually don't need that one. I have them both highlighted. Make sure you only have one highlighted. There we go. And then just to keep things simple here, I'm just going to animate these in five frames. So I'm going to zoom my playhead over here, one, two, three, four, five. And again, I can see over here on the left hand side and make sure that I'm on frame five. And then I'm going to move my object down. So I can do it in the composition or I can do it down here. I'm just going to do it down here. So I'm going to just drag this guy down and you'll notice what's trailing behind this object right there until it touches is what we call a motion path. So this is showing the individual keyframes. Oops, let me pan back here. So the big squares, notice there's a big square right there. That corresponds to that keyframe right there. That's how I highlighted. And the big square down here is corresponding to this keyframe right here. And then all the little dots in between, they're pretty hard to see, right? That dot, that dot, that dot, that dot. Those are the frame numbers. So that's frame one, frame two, frame three, frame four, right? Because I have uh, five frames in between these guys. So that's those little teeny tiny dots and that correlates to the motion path. So let's go ahead now and move this object back up. So I'm gonna move forward five frames in time to frame 10. And this time I'll do it in the composition just so you can see both ways. Click, hold, holding down shift so I go in a perfect line and I'm gonna go back up. So if the ball bounces, it's not gonna go all the way back to the top, right? Because gravity is gonna push down. So maybe it just goes about three quarters of the way right there. And then the next keyframe down. So I'll move forward five frames. So I'm on frame 15. It's gonna be back down at the bottom. Now I could drag this guy down or mess around with my numbers, but I know that essentially this position is gonna be the exact same as this position. So I'm just gonna do a copy paste. This is something you'll do quite often in After Effects is you'll copy things and paste them. So I'm just gonna grab this keyframe, copy it, and it will remember all of the values for that specific property. Move over to frame 15, and then I'm going to paste. And sure enough, now my ball is at that position. And then frame 20, that's gonna move back up again. Maybe it only moves up here uh, halfway or so like this, maybe around there. Then I'll move forward five frames again. So I'm at frame 25. Let's go ahead and paste again. So it's back down. So I'm pasting, move forward. Now let's move this up a little bit more and we'll just do this maybe once more or twice. So maybe it goes to right here. Move forward five frames. I'm gonna paste. Move forward five frames. One more time, I'm just gonna go up a little bit forward five frames and paste. Perfect. So now that we have those keyframes in place, After Effects is going to automatically animate and I can scrub through my timeline to watch the animation. So as I scrub here, you can see it. Now, one important thing I wanna note right at the get go is you'll see this little green bar down here. Notice how my green bar is fully um, opaque or it's, you know, it's not transparent, it's not split up. This is called the RAM preview, R-A-M. And what this basically means is whenever you create an animation inside of After Effects, it has to sort of build the animation in memory in order for your playhead to play back at full speed. In other words, 30 frames per second. So I can hit spacebar on my keyboard and that will preview the animation. So if your bar is not green, it may skip frames or be jittery or something like that. So as you get, this is a really simple animation, but as you, you know, have maybe hundreds of objects all moving around, your computer might not be able to keep up with you in real time. So the first time you play through a movie, it sort of builds a preview. And then once this bar is solid green, the second time you play through, it'll be at actual real time speed. So always keep an eye out for that. If for one reason or another, you're doing really complicated stuff, you have 4K videos and things like that, and your computer's not able to keep up, you'll then, your second sort of option is to down sample the resolution. And that's what this drop down here is for. So if I click this full, you'll notice that if I go to half resolution, it's a little bit hard to see, but this object's gonna get less and less uh, crisp. And if I go all the way down to, let's go to quarter resolution, notice how it's, let me deselect so you can see, notice how it's all pixelated right here, because it's gonna render it out at a quarter of a resolution. And this will help your computer be able to keep up. So this is a little preview. You can always switch if yours is struggling. Usually you wanna leave it at auto, and then After Effects will sort of automatically adjust as it's needed, but you can always manually tweak that.
if you find yourself in a situation where things are just not running quite full speed. Okay, so now we have our keyframes in place, but you'll notice that when I hit the space bar on my keyboard, this little playhead, this is the red bar that shows the animation, it just keeps on running. And I can scroll up and try to catch it, and hit space bar again and it pauses. But this isn't very helpful because I'm just previewing a small section, only really right, two seconds of my full 10 second composition. So what I need to do is I need to trim the work area down. And that's what this little bar is right here, okay? Notice that I can drag this to the left and I'll come over here and I'll grab this one and I'll drag it to the right. And you, this is kind of a little bit of a pain. I'm gonna show you a shortcut. So I'm dragging this, right, scrolling. Of course, I could maybe zoom down and then drag this guy all the way forward and this is totally fine to do. And once you have your work area set, when my playhead is inside of here, so I'm gonna click over here to move the playhead and hit space bar, notice it's just gonna loop right between this specific section of time. So this is something really common that you'll do when you're working on a little timing or a little animation. You'll sort of just set your work area to a specific spot and then just loop through that to see how the motion is behaving in that specific area. It's such a common thing that there are keyboard shortcuts for this. And the keyboard shortcuts are on your keyboard to set the first or the beginning, it's the letter B. So if I move the playhead and then push B on my keyboard, it sets the beginning point for that specific work area. And the end is the letter N on the keyboard. So they're right next to one another. So there's the end, there's the end. So you'll be doing this a lot. Come over here, set the end, hit space bar, and be able to loop through that animation. Sweet, all right, so we've created our first little basic animation. And now I'm gonna show you a couple of the tips to make it a little bit more realistic. Right now, the motion in this animation is completely linear. The ball moves at a constant rate down. And that's not really how things work in the natural world because we have gravity that's pushing. So as you drop an object, they accelerate. So we need to sort of simulate that here in our animation software as well. The concept of this is a little outside the scope of this beginning After Effects tutorial, but the, uh, the key words here are easing or elasticity is what we're gonna be adding in to this specific object. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're going to, uh, there's a couple of ways we can do this in After Effects, but first I wanna show you the graph editor. So I'm actually gonna pull this up window up a little bit and the graph editor will allow us to manipulate, fine tune the animation on these specific keyframes. So I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. Notice right now that these keyframes are diamonds, okay? A diamond keyframe means that it's a linear keyframe or it's just static um, constant speed motion. So if I select one of these keyframes, I'm just gonna select this one right here, just as an illustration, and you right click, we can go to this option called Keyframe Assistant and I'm gonna set this to what's known as Easy Ease. There's a dedicated sheet keyboard shortcut F9 because you'll use this one a lot. And once I set it to Easy Ease, notice that it turned itself into a little hourglass shape. And that's telling me that this keyframe is now eased. And it's kind of hard to see the motion here or see what's going on. And that's where the graph editor comes into play. So the graph editor is this icon right here. So we're gonna go ahead and select the graph editor and that pulls up this little graph editor in the bottom. And now that we have the graph editor open, we're able to see uh, that op or see the motion. So if you click on the Y position, which is the thing we're animating, notice how these are all straight and hard edged, chunk, 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 chunk. and this one right here is curved. And that's because this is the keyframe that we added the easing on, so we now curved those. So if I select this point and this point, they're just hard anchor points. You can select any of these and you get Bezier handles. But if I select this one that we ease, notice I have two handles on here. And I can actually pull these handles out, pull them this way, pull them this way, and I can change the way the motion is going to behave between that point of time. So again, I'm not going to get into the, the rules. It would take us an hour or so lecture just to do the concept of easing. We're just gonna learn how to use it at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna switch out of the graph editor for a second. We're gonna go back here. We're actually gonna easy ease all of these. A quick way to select multiple keyframes is just to click over here and you have a little box you can drag across them all, or you can just select the actual property name over here in your transform panel and that will select them all as well. Now I can right click, go to keyframe assistant and just easy ease all of those. So now if I switch back to the graph editor, you'll see that it's a wavy curve instead of a straight line curve. And let's go ahead and just preview this right here. We can preview in the graph editor as well. And you can see we have a bit more of a natural motion but it's still not how a ball behaves when it bounces. It's a little bit 
um, off. So let's tweak this and see if we can make it more realistic for how a ball bounces. So if we look at the motion, when we drop a ball, right, it's going to kind of start out slow and then it's going to accelerate down, bounce pretty hard, and then it's going to slow down again as it moves up, as gravity is kind of pushing on it, and then it'll start to accelerate again and bounce. So it kind of goes you know, slow, hard, fast, slow, hard, fast, slow. That's the way things bounce. So let's try to manipulate our keyframes here using the easing curves to see if we can get that. So our first one right here, as the ball drops, if we kind of drag this handle out, we're going to make the motion slow at the beginning, and then it's going to start to speed up here in the middle. And then let's kind of pull this in here so it actually bounces pretty quick. And then we'll bounce it pretty quick here. And then let's pull here so it's going to slow there. And we're, I'm just going to exaggerate this a little bit so you can kind of see. So let's just look at this little first bit. So again, I'm going to take my playhead right to here. I'm going to hit N on my keyboard and let's just loop that. So you can see as it falls and bounces, it goes down quick and then bounces up. So that's pretty good. And let's go ahead and manipulate some of these a little bit more. And so we can see how that works. So I'm just going to move my playhead over. And we're going to manually do this just so we can practice. It's a really good idea to just practice this. So again, as the ball goes down, I don't want it to slow down too much as it hits the ground. So I want to kind of make that tight. I really don't want it to slow down very much as it rebounds. That one's going to be pretty tight. It's only going to slow on the top edge. So as I move towards the top, this is where the easing is going to happen. So I'll pull these out a little bit more, to kind of exaggerate that. Essentially, I'm going to tighten these ones up and exaggerate these ones a little bit. And I'm just doing that for all these keyframes. Let's move over here. Tighten this one up. And we can, if we don't want any, I can just convert that to a hard anchor as well. But just for the sake of illustration, I'll leave them like they are. Pull these ones out. OK, let's go ahead and set the out point again. So we'll move out here again. I can hit the letter end on my keyboard because that's the end. Hit space bar. And look how much more natural that is of a bouncing ball. It just feels like it bounces, right? And that's what we want with our animation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, let's switch out of the graph editor. Just as way of, of note, there are two graph editors in After Effects, two methods of doing graph editor. We're working right now at what, in what's known as the value graph. But After Effects also has what's known as a speed graph as well. So we'll get to that a little bit later. But this is the value graph. Um, OK, so now let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. So I'm going to zoom out here um, in my composition. And I just want to duplicate this layer so you can visually see the difference between the easing ball bounce and the non-eased ball bounce. So I'm going to grab this layer, and I can uh, copy and paste it. In fact, I'm going to rename this layer while we're at it. This is the wrong one, but this is my floor. And I'm going to drag my floor layer below my ball layer and then lock this layer. Now, locking a layer just means I can't grab it or manipulate it or accidentally edit things, right? So I've just temporarily locked that. Then I'll come to my ball, and I'm going to copy this layer and paste it. So I'll just select the ball layer, Command C on my keyboard, Command V to paste. Now I've got ball two, and here's a problem. This is a really common problem, so I want you to kind of pay attention to this part. I know I'm going quickly, but this is a video that has a lot crammed into it, so you can rewatch sections as you need. So on ball two, uh, what we're going to be doing is moving it, right? So you would think, well, naturally, okay, if I want my second ball to be over on this side of my canvas, I'm going to come up here and just grab it and just drag it over and, and move it. But this is going to cause a problem if you have um, keyframes. So for example, let's come back in. Notice I do have my, my keyframes in here, right? So if your playhead is sort of in a weird spot and you're not paying attention, you may come over here to ball two. And you can see, because my playhead is right here, when I click and move this, notice how I actually added a keyframe in there. I, I didn't want that. I don't want the keyframe to be added. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have, there's kind of a few ways to do this, but if you click the layer and select all of the keyframes, when you move this guy, you'll still see it creates a keyframe. So what you have to do is you have to click the, the playhead needs to be over the top of an existing keyframe, or you have to grab this, the end point, either one of those things. So if I'm in the middle here and I grab the ending point and move this over to the right, notice how a keyframe didn't get created, which is what I want. Or this has to be on top of any keyframe, and then when I click and move, it won't create a new keyframe because it's already on top of a keyframe. Okay, So just kind of a little gotcha to pay attention to um, from moving objects. So select all the keyframes, then you can go ahead and click the start or end and drag it over to the right. So I'll just pull this guy over to the right and uh, sure, drop him right there. 
And now let's preview both of these animations so we can see the difference. So spacebar. Oh, whoops, they're both eased right now, sorry. On the second ball, I'm going to convert all of these keyframes back to um, non, uh, non eased keyframes, essentially. So we're going to remove all of these and just set them back to default um, keyframes. So the way we do this is to remove the easy ease, you just hold the command or control key and notice I have them all highlighted and just click on any single one and that converts them all back to regular keyframes. I can go ahead and open up my graph and sure enough, they're all hard edged. So this is all linear motion as opposed to this one down here, which when we open up the graph editor, um, you'll see we need to reset this over here and open up, I'm in the wrong. Oh, I have that layer locked, that's why I can't see it, whoops. Let's click back here on the position and you'll see these ones all curved, right? So that's the difference. Now let's go ahead and look at the actual visual of that. So I'm gonna hold down spacebar and those will look the exact same to me. Maybe I deleted the wrong layer. Let's zoom in here and see, too far zoomed in. Let's fly open this guy, look at our wide position. Okay, so those are all linear keyframes. There's no easing at all on those. So let's go to the ball two and whoops. Yeah, I accidentally set those all back to linear as well. Okay, let's command C so I can undo that on the ball two. Okay, so you can see they're, they're different now. So let's go ahead and preview that. So this one on the left has the easing applied to it and the one on the right is just linear motion. And you can see how different those two animations feel. This one looks much more natural. And that is the basic concept of easing. You're going to just manipulate the time by going into the graph editor and changing the velocity of the space in between those keyframes. This is the concept of spacing versus timing. Notice that both of these balls have the same time, which is, what did we do? Um, one second and 16 or so frames or whatever we did there. So they have the same time, right? It's almost one and a half seconds. So in other words, they start and end the exact same time, but the space between the time, the movement, the space between those times is different. So the spacing is very different. So spacing is where easing comes into play to make things much more natural. Okay, now the graph editor is kind of a bit more of a complex topic, so we don't have time to cover all of that in this intro, but that's the basics of working inside of that graph editor. Now, one little key point you're gonna to wanna to learn is because these positions are so common, the, the five points here, anchor and X and Y and scale and rotation, because they're so common, you can use keyboard shortcuts to pull up those. So instead of clicking this and then clicking the transform control and then finding position, there's keyboard shortcuts for those. And to get to them, you just, I'm gonna do this on list layer down here, floor. You push P and notice it automatically pops up position. You do R for rotation, you do S for scale, you do, um, T for transparency, which brings up the opacity, and A for anchor point. So that makes it so you don't have to you know, fly through all these menus to try to get to it. So if I want to manipulate the position of my ball, I just select layer, hit P for position, and then boom, I'm right up here where I have my properties I can work with um, very easily. Okay, so those are the shortcuts for those five main properties. All right, now let's go ahead. We're going to do two things. We're going to um, show you first how I can move multiple layers together and change their position within the canvas. And then lastly, we're going to animate the uh, X position so our ball actually bounces along like this, like it's bouncing um, along a court or something like that. And that's the last two things we're going to be getting to in this little intro whirlwind. So firstly, let's go ahead and do the multiple positions. Now, inside of After Effects, I, I mentioned that everything is an object in the layers panel. And there's an object that's called a null object, N-U-L-L. -L. So if I right click and say new, I can create a null object. And you can think of a null object, null means nothing or zil or zilch. So null is like an empty object. In other words, it's invisible, but yet it has the same properties of regular objects. In other words, it has all of these same transform properties. And so what we can do is this is the concept of parenting. I can parent uh, the null object so that all of these three objects are its children and the children will behave like the parent. 
And there's a couple of ways to do that, but the easy way is using the pick whip. So if I click this first one and hold down shift and click the second one, I've highlighted all of those three layers. And this icon right here is the pick whip icon. So if I, it doesn't really matter which one you choose since I have all three layers highlighted. I'll just do the bottom one. If you click and hold, I can then pick whip and choose this null object layer. So I'm moving towards the layer and you let go. And I've now parented uh, that layer to these three objects. You'll see that the parent and link is set to one null. So that's one way you can do it. You can also just select the layers and choose from the menu here any specific layer and now they'll be parented to that. So it doesn't really matter which way you do that. So I'm just gonna re-pick whip those to the null. And now watch what happens. I'm gonna open up the null. I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard for position. And if I mess around with the X and Y position, notice that it's manipulating the X and Y of all of these three layers. And everything here works. So I hit R for rotation and I rotate this guy um, around a specific degree. Notice that it's rotating all three of those layers as well. I'll set those back to zero and zero and switch back to the uh, P for position. So what I want to do is I'm just going to come in here and make sure that my ground plane is down actually on the floor. So this is, you know, maybe you animated and you're like, oh shoot, I need to move something. Well, you don't want to remove and re-keyframe everything. So this is an easy way to do that. So now I can just grab my null. I'll just come over here um, to the Y value and I'm just going to right click and, or not, sorry, not right click, just click and drag and pull that down to the floor. Perfect. Hit spacebar to preview my animation. That's exactly how I want it. And then you can just delete the null. You don't need it anymore. You just delete it. It's kind of a little temporary thing. You can leave them in your project as well, but um, some kind, in some cases you don't want to do that. So now I've got my two objects and that looks great. Okay, so let's go ahead and now manipulate the last property, which is the Y property. So I'm gonna select my uh, second ball. I'm actually just gonna delete that layer so it's not visible anymore. That was just to illustrate the difference between the easing commands. I'm gonna come back to layer number one and I'm gonna hit my P for position. And notice I have my X and Y position here on the keyboard. And I want this thing to go from left to right. So on my X position, I'm gonna start a keyframe on position one and I'm gonna move all the way over here to the right hand side. I'll just do this one at the end and I'll um, move it to the right. So I'm just gonna come up here and click and drag and move this guy over to the right. I'm holding down shift on my keyboard as well so it gets at the correct position or so it stays horizontal. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and preview this. And there's my little ball bouncing. Now, one thing you'll note because we used five frames for every single thing, the timing seems a little bit off. In other words, the duration of the ball bouncing from its highest position down to the first bounce is taking five frames. But the ball doesn't go up as high for the second one, so it shouldn't take five frames for this one to go to this one. It should be slightly less than five frames. So what we can do is we then can manipulate the time right within here as well. So you can actually click and drag and move around keyframes as needed right inside of the um, bar right here as well. So let's just go ahead and practice that. So, okay, so this one looks okay. It falls down, it bounces, it goes back up. Now from this point to this point, it needs to be a little bit less than five frames and you don't always have that ability, but let's just go ahead and try it. So I'm gonna select all of these frames, all of these guys right here, all of these keyframes, whoops, on the X value there and just click and drag and move them. So I'm gonna highlight them all. I can just click and drag and then move this over one keyframe at a time, okay? So you can also use the keyboard shortcut of option if you have multiple selected, you hold down option and you use your arrow keys, that will move them all over as well. So often that's easier than clicking and dragging. So I'm gonna move those all over once and that looks good. So then it's gonna bounce back up and then it's gonna fall back down. Let's move all these over a little bit and you get the idea here. I'm just gonna, you know, option, pop these guys over a frame or two and maybe this one's two frames or something like that. This is gonna make the ball bounce quite a bit faster um, I'll just kind of do this quickly. I'm just moving them all a little bit more at a time. And just to sort of illustrate the point that now the timing is going to be different between these bounces. So let's go ahead and hit spacebar to see. And that's much more natural, right? Because the, the timing is a little bit quicker on those bottom bounces. So that feels a bit better. And of course we have time over here where it's just rolling, which is just fine. Oops, looks like I added a keyframe there on accident. I'll delete that one. Okay, so that is now the full bouncing ball animation that's moving along a little path and rolling at the end. 
And hopefully you've learned quite a few concepts of just jumping into After Effects and getting started. The last thing I'll mention that we don't have really time to cover um, in depth is just two, two principles. Everything inside of After Effects is, uh, in, is not in real time. So in order to share this with somebody, I can't send them my After Effects file. I can't say save and then say, oh, here's my AI or my Adobe After Effects file, AE file. If they open it on their computer, it may be all broken. It's not going to work because these things are not saved inside of the project, movies and audios. They're saved on your own hard drive. So we actually have to render this thing out as a movie in order to share it or send it to people that want to be able to view it. So I'll cover how we can render this out. Um, and then the other concept, and this is sort of a huge concept, but After Effects has a zillion effects. So if I want my specific bouncing ball to have some sort of cool effect or things like that, you can go up here to the effect category and there's just a zillion things in here and they're quite complex um, in what they can do and you'll spend all day long really playing around um, inside of here. And so there's just lots and lots of things. I'll just go to stylize and I'll click on glow to add a glow effect. And notice that the glow effect itself, all the effect um, properties are always over here in the project panel whenever you have an effect, but there's just a zillion glow, you know, things inside of here, all these little things you can do and mess around and manipulate things. So there's just so many effects that you can add and also keyframe on different types of objects as well, which we're not gonna really cover um, any of those. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that effect. But well, let me command Z and notice that when I added that effect, all the properties are down here as well. So this is the same stuff as this um, as well. So once you add an effect, your layer gets a little subcategory called effect, and you can come in here and keyframe all of these to mess around with all the glow properties. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this and delete that. And let's now render this out. So this is gonna be the output file that I would then turn in. So to render things out, we need to go to the render menu. There's actually two ways you can do this in After Effects. You can render directly from After Effects, or you can send your composition file, your AE file, to the program called Adobe Media Encoder. So that's something you may want to download. It's a much more powerful program that allows you to have fine-grained control over the output format and the output containers and the codecs and things like that for the video file format. Um, but for just the simplicity of this one, let's just go ahead and render it, um, render it straight out from After Effects. So in order to do this, we're going to select our comp and we're going to go to the file um, composition and we're going to add this to the render queue. Notice these are the two options I mentioned in the Adobe Media Encoder or the After Effects render queue. So we're just going to add this to the After Effects render queue and notice that my main comp is now set down here and then I can go ahead and set what it's going to be output at. So there's a few presets in here. We can come in here and say, okay, I want that to match the render settings or you know whatever one you want. High quality with alpha, high quality. And there's a few things like that inside of these templates. So you can click on this and you have a little bit more control over the format of the output. So I'm just gonna leave this at default. All I really wanna show you is how to output it, not all the settings inside of the output mode, but we're outputting this at H264, um, which is fine enough for what we're gonna need here. So now that it's into the render queue, we can go ahead and then just render it. So let's go ahead and set the output. Um, we need to tell After Effects render a queue where this object is going to be output to. So you can see it says not yet specified. And so I'm just gonna select this and this is, hey, hey, where do you wanna save this thing, right? So I'm just gonna say, okay, let's just go ahead and put it on my desktop and I'll just call this the bouncing ball. Bouncing ball and it's gonna be an imp uh, an mp4 it's going to be using the main comp this looks good hit save and it's going to ask for permission on my computer because i haven't given that yet okay so now i have an output um, now you can see i can click off the checkbox here i can select it and then i just push the big render button over here so it's going to click on render and that should go pretty quick i mean that was it it's already done but if you have a longer movie of course it may take you know seconds or even hours if it's super long and now we can go ahead and check that out so i'm going to move over here to my desktop and uh, let's go ahead and go, whoops, where's my desktop at? There we go. So there's my movie. So now I can hit spacebar to preview this. And there's my full rendered out MP4 movie that I can upload to YouTube or share or you know send. And that's the final output of this project. All right, that's it for the intro whirlwind to After Effects 2023 version, 2023. I hope you learned a few things and I will look forward to seeing you in the next one.